Okay. Um, this is um, our, our group is Solutions and Construction Management, and this is our final presentation for CGT 411. And we'd like to welcome all of you for coming. Um, first, we'd like to thank our sponsors, um, Pepper Construction, and their their representatives, Mike Alder and Dave Murphy, that's been working with us this semester, as well as Haskell Construction and their representatives, Ryan Kramer and Dave Balls, um, as well as uh, as well as our advisors, Professor Clark Corey and Terry Burton. Um, also, we would like to thank um, Professor Glotzbaugh, um, Holder Construction, Eric Zarini, Zar Zaroni, Zaroni, and um, Regina Brown. Um, without them, we would not have been able to do our project. Um, as well as all of our audience, um, everyone, we really appreciate you coming and taking part in our final presentation. Um, at the beginning of our uh, semester we started out and we talked to Pepper Construction and we found out what their problem was and we came up with a problem statement and our problem statement for the semester was there is currently little connection between safety observations recorded on a construction site with mobile devices and the information about observations available in 3D, 4D building models within the project review software. From that problem statement we came up with a research question and we've been working on that for the semester and that was how can construction site safety be improved by recording safety observations on a mobile device and documenting them within a 3D 4D model. And now I'm going to hand it off to Matt to discuss our product. Next slide. Okay, so from talking with our sponsors, we came up with a pretty extensive list of what they wanted in a product, kind of what they wanted to do, where they were going. Some of the um, main points are was location information to know where you are on, on where you are on a site and track that within the model. Um, 3D and 4D model integration, going uh, having dynamic forms was very important, so it can be uh, changed on the fly and multi multi purpose. Addition, additionally, uh, they wanted to ha be able to take photos within the app without exiting the app and have those uh, integrated into the observations uh, very very easily and uh, without a lot of hassle. Um, logistics, quality, and safety have both been uh, addressed, and uh, cost control is also brought up. Okay, this is the kind of first iteration of our product. Uh, we started here, didn't like where it was going. Um, we found that it was not, you couldn't see everything you wanted to do on it. Um, we had a very limited amount of screen space that was actually being used. So we changed it to our current version. Uh, this is our application. Um, here on the home screen, we have a lot of categories um, that they're the general categories. And when you go in and click on a general category, you bring up a subcategory here. The subcategories uh, is uh, it's all dynamically created um, from a file that's just imported into the the software. Um, you click on a subcategory, it brings you into the observation screen here. This observation screen uh, is kind of the core of the this application. It's where all the data is collected that's then transferred into the model. Um, all these fields um, are you can enter, and when you click a drop down, it, you can see um, it's very automated so you can um, select it very easily with, with minimal typing was one of our uh, main goals here. We don't want you to take a long time to enter, enter this information and it would be more information will be recorded if it's easy to do. So um, we tried to eliminate all typing uh, as possible. Um, here we also have the number of observations which is uh, currently used in the safety tracking po both positive and negative. Um, corrected yes or no, if it's corrected or not, corrected by action taken, fixed on the cause of it, uh, the level, so the elevation it is, what level it is in the building, the elevation it is off of that level, so if you're four feet off of the third floor, you enter that so it can correctly be located within the model, um, as well as both this violation description and solution description. Um, you also here have here up at the top uh, a button to take a picture from this observation screen. These pictures will then be linked with that observation. So we have a picture, and now, and then we also have the ability up here to pick your location. Um, this is so it can be located within the building um, in the accurate, lo accurate location. We also have the ability to automatically detect your location, and uh, then it will do that without uh, having to pick it. 
Um, if we go back to the main screen here, we can submit it. It goes back to the main screen. Yes, and all these icons at the top here are kind of the settings and other features. Uh, first, we have the edit your list. So this is where the form becomes dynamic. You uh, can add categories, remove categories, add uh, observations, like sub-observations. So we also have the ability to change what list is loaded. Um, so if we go in, we want to change from a quality list to a safety list for each company. Um, it's, very, it's very dynamic and uh, editable. So if we go back to the home screen here, we have uh, personal information. So information about who's recording this observation. Um, this is uh, useful so you can refer back to who saw what and you have a record of who's recording this information. Uh, we go back and this is project information is next here. So it records what project you're on, um, detailed information about that, so it, it links it to the correct model. Um, you also, down here you have your um, calibration button. This calibration button is used uh, for the automatic, automatic location tracking. It sets your base point at the origin of where your model's at. Um, then after that, it can, it, it'll, um, when you detect your location, it'll convert it to an X and Y location to be converted into the model. Um, after this, uh, you go back to the home screen and we bring up um, location picking is also accessible through here. It'll update your location for uh, your, your next observations. Automatic location and then here you go to your observations. These safety cones are the observations that have been submitted. Uh, from this screen you can edit observations, update the information, change what you don't like, um, take more photos. Anything that you set up the first time can be changed. And then you also have this button here which is the submit to the server. Uh, this is where when you click here it creates the file, sends it to the server so it then can be accessible and imported into our models. Um, if we go back, we also have a uh, quick pick, take a picture. So if you want to start with a picture, you can do that and then create the form, or you could quick pick, just add an observation, and then fill out the information without going through the home screen. Um, we, here we have our picture linking. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, when you take it, when you record an observation, you go and you um, all the all the pictures associated with that will be um, set and. Uh, assigned to that observation. So when you create a form a, or a report, all the pictures for that instance will be listed with that and you can click on that and view them in a the larger thing. Also within Navisworks it will um, have a link to those pictures so you can pull them up. Uh, and Tony's going to talk a little about location. As Matt mentioned, we had two different systems for location. Um, the location was pivotal for this project. Without it, we would not have been able to input it into the model. So we spent extensive research trying to figure out the best method to approach this on a construction site. Um, we researched Cisco and but ultimately decided on location patternizing, um, which creates a fingerprint at a specific point and compares those points to where you currently are to accurately place you in the model. Um, we ran into issues of the technology not being capable of accurately placing us with enough accuracy that we needed. Um, so we went back to the drawing board and at the same time that we did that, we also did preliminary testing of the location tracking on site at Pepper's site. And it became apparent to us that not only do we need to do location tracking, but a lot of times you don't want to be where the hazard is, so you need location picking, which led to the location picking that we implemented as well. Um, we also went back to the drawing board for the location tracking and ended up deciding on a third party plugin that uses a hybrid system of GPS and Wi-Fi analyzing. So what we ended up doing is we submit to their server with our GPS position and Wi-Fi network fingerprint and send that to them. And they send us back a latitude and longitude that we compared to the origin or project base point and uh, calculate a difference in X and Y in feet that we then store into the data that accurately places it within the model. So to get that into the model, um, the app saves all the data to a database. It creates a 3D file um, with location information stored in the file, as well as a report of the observations that you recorded. Um, and then from the server, you can use Navisworks to access the data and the 3D file and pull it all together into one item that you can click and search. and filter and Matt's going to bring up Navisworks here so we can show you the searching and filtering. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. So he, he has the blue block highlighted currently. Yep. Um, and with that, you can see all the properties that you would have inputted from the form over here. And if you wanted to pick anything from there, you could type it into the search when it's done loading. <laughs> In the search right here. So he could type hunt, and any block that had hunt within it, you would be able to search. <laughs> it's a little bit slow. We're connected through a phone at this point in time, but <laughs> Purdue is blocking access to a server of ours, so we had to go around. <laughs> um, on top of searching, you can filter. <laughs> Filtering allows you to create predefined sets and searches, um, so you can get a larger category of hunt or if it was in the afternoon or if it was a certain type of incident that was occurring or um, ultimately we would like to do within the 40 schedule as well if it was you know in March or if it was in April um, that's sort of where we're at now for searching and filtering To get it into Navisworks, we looked at all the importable file formats into Navisworks and we knew that we needed to get a file format that we could edit with text and not have to do anything extra. Um, of all the file formats that we found, the FBX was the only one that we really found suitable for our needs. Um, it was text-based and it came with an SDK, so there was documentation on how to edit it. Um, and then we just inputted that into Navisworks as a native FBX file. And our ultimate goal from all of this, combining it all together, is prevention through design. Um, we are collecting the data to then trend it so that they can prevent the design in the building of the structure so that safety hazards don't have an opportunity to occur. Um, in our testing, we did what was called a power test. Uh, we met with our staff consultant. Um, and we needed to find the significance of the difference between Thank you. 
Which is, huh. I didn't even realize it wasn't on. Um, none of these support model creation, which is something in our research we never found anything that does that. So we believe this is unique to our application. Um, so we support many of these other things that they support, but they don't have model creation. So. So with this technology, we have the ability. Um, we encountered a lot of different languages, a lot of different uh, technologies we had to merge together to make this work. Uh, we encountered PHP on the server side. Um, we used uh, SQLite, and we, that's internal on Android. Um, and then C SQL Server is our central database. Uh, it's programmed in Java and XML, and then HTML and CSS to uh, create our reports. Um, also, we encountered the ADN. They are a resource to uh, kind of help us get involved with uh, Navisworks, and um, they uh, we can shoot questions at them, and they'll get back to us with uh, with information when when they can. Um, so that's what that's kind of the technology we use to create uh, this product. Okay, so how we all brought it together? This is kind of our final product here. This is our end goal. So what did we do to get this to happen? We First, we, we wanted to create the model, so our first thing we had to do was gather the input. So the app was kind of a byproduct of the goal of creating the model. So we created an uh, app that was dynamic, so it can be used for many things. Um, it submitted to the server, so we can draw it from any time, search it for any other information we needed. So it's very um, dynamic in what it, what it can do. And it also generated reports, is, uh, so you have the information ex outside of the model. You can also view it outside the model and link, to the na link the database to the Navisworks um, so you can view the information within Navisworks. Um, does anybody have any questions at this point in time? When you did your testing, what was your sequencing in? Was it on paper, paper, and then the tablets? Can you go through that again for me? Because I think that would impact the results. The, we did, the sequence was paper inside. Paper inside, tablet inside, paper outside, tablet outside. So they, you did see a little bit on the paper side that it was faster outside. That could very well be attributed to they got more familiar with the paper on the inside. And there's really nothing that we could do to, I mean, it's the same paper form. So we had, they had different questions. I guess I neglected to mention that. There's eight different questions for inside that they did both on paper and tablet. And then eight, question, eight different questions that they did use the same set for outside, paper and tablet. There's you know, nothing to base upon the, the, the comfort and the familiarity of the, of, the, of the tool that they were using that may increase their speed. We took... You didn't, you didn't do any data research on that, that the tool or the, or the paper. No, he's talking about the learning effect. The learning effect because they became comfortable with the paper once they were outside. Yeah, yeah. Um, we didn't have any, we didn't really record anything based off of, our statistician had told us that this is going to happen, and he told us there's not really anything that we can do to change that. But he said it wouldn't really be that significant of a difference because they were different questions. So it's not like they were looking up the same thing in both places. It was more of a sorting, um, sorting thing. It, it, the learn, as much as you learned it, it didn't have a large effect. We tested some type of employees that have had exposure to the forums before, and their results were very palpable. So 
even having exposure didn't skew our results as much as you might think it would. It's very difficult for it's easier to understand when you see the paper. We actually have the paper somewhere. Um, you can look at it after if you want. But it's easier to understand when you see the paper that, and know that there are different sets of questions that um, you've, you're more familiar with where specific things are and how the, to flip through the paper. It's just, um, again, it's something that we knew was going to happen, but we couldn't really control because it was already the standard. So we didn't make two different, two different sets because they already had a standard that they use. Could you go back to slide on your end product model? You stated that you learned how to create the model to get it into the, the XML and, and then into Navisworks. Was the model created any differently um, as, as currently as the way the industry does? Um, you know, creates their, their models? No, the only thing we had to do differently is be aware of our base point. Um, is if, if you know your base point, you can kind of base all your location information off of that. So as long as you're aware of that, that can even be adapted after it's created. So as long as you're aware of it, where it's at, the location information can be. So it's just a, a pending, another file. So they don't have to do anything different? No. Nope. 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 I got a question about your base point. Yes. Um, who sets the base point? That just be the site foreman or that architect? Architect. Well, the way it, the way it works now is currently the architect and the modeler would set it um, in the model, but then to to calibrate it on site, you have to um, physically go to that point. So whoever's inspecting it would have to go to that point and set it physically. It is latitude longitude that it's based off. The base point is registered with the latitude and longitude, and then when you add location tracking, it returns a latitude longitude. So that's where we get our difference x and y in feet. Adding the height, height um, kind of gives it the ability to view where it happened, I guess. Um, if it happened in the ceiling, I think it's a lot different than if it happened on the floor. It kind of gives you perspective on why that happened. This room doesn't portray it very well, but if you have a lot of pipes or HVAC going on in the ceiling, it would be easier to document that it was up there and not down on the floor. Based on that data, you could just, you know, if you wanted to infer just on the visual, you would say that, that human traffic is a contributor to the instances because there would be less human traffic in the ceiling. So, I mean, it's a pretty obvious deduction, but, uh, you know, whether it's the truth or not, you, know, you don't know. But I think the Z axis is extremely important. Uh, were you able to? Uh with various orientations on your pictures, you be able to come up with a um, kind of an orientation. So for perception of the photo, you'd be able to say, you know, the person was facing northwest or something like that. The photo you physically took, like with the camera? Right. Um, right now, the photo, what the photo is, is I guess just of that observation. It doesn't record exactly where the photo was taken. Um, so you'll have a picture of that observation, but as per knowing where the person that took it, what direction they're facing, and exactly where they were, is only as good as what information you record on your location. The compass component of Android, it would just be another feature that we could add and store that as a variable in our database. So ideally, we could save which direction you were facing. Right, but well, oftentimes, you know, the perception on one side is what's on the other. So, um, another quick question. Are you able to document both positive and negative observations? Yes. yes. Yeah. You can show them if you want. Uh, that's okay. It is, it is okay. You see here, it's just positive and negative, so we're positive and negative. Okay. okay. Uh, and what do you anticipate the training time for the employees to learn the system so they can have it? It's very minimal. Yeah. It's very uh, basic user friendly. Uh, as far as the settings go, maybe some of the settings are a little more complex, but as far as 
filling out this form is very self-explanatory. Um, it's not a lot of training has to go into this. You could yeah. probably train someone in an hour or two. Yeah, in our testing, they picked it up right away. When we went on the job site with people more familiar in the construction industry, they picked it up even quicker. Our testing, our main issue with the testing was understanding the paper forms that they were using. But as soon as they got their hands on the tablet, they just said, oh, this makes sense how we, we complete the form. Well, it, it just, every new technology has a break-in period. If I have to stand down a thousand people for an hour, that's a thousand man hour. Yeah. To actually learn the application itself would only take a few minutes. Uh, to learn the Navisworks and all that extra stuff uh, would take a little bit of knowing how to set it up, but still that wouldn't take very much time. If the FRP is uh, red, right? Yeah. FRP. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. A um, couple of things. Really good job. Um, when we came to you guys with this idea, this is kind of what we had in mind, so um, uh, I guess uh, a couple things. One, when we actually put the app on site to test it, I will say the user interface and all that was was really good. I mean, we could understand that the most complicated part was understanding some of the like, functions of the actual package itself. So, um, I guess one question that I had would be: so if you are doing all of the observation, very specific in the file. Nope. Okay, this is the folder that everything gets submitted to. Uh, ideally, it's going to be separated in folder per uh, submittal. But as you can see here, each FBX, each submittal creates a new FBX file, a new report, and uh, all the pictures are stored within this. So if we pull up um, here, we uh, can see this is the report for that day. This is the report for that day. So each each time you submit, it'll create a new report, a new FBX file, and all the information associated with that is um, for each submittal, I guess. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you you collected the data and and you developed a system for collecting the data. Um, project beyond collection, um, yep. and tell us what your team thinks about how the how the data might be used um, beyond the moment of. Okay. Um, ideally, we would like to create a HTML um, point that you could go to to find trending on any and everything that we've collected. Um, from, you know, was it this company? Was it this employee? Was it at 3.30 every day that there was an instance? Um, was it the fifth floor, first floor? Was it the basement? We'd like you to be able to search and ideally highlight certain trends that we find within the data. Um, that's sort of a future project. The, the app itself is more a recording mechanism. It's not, it's not intended to search or view all the data. It's just to record it and get it to a server where you can view it. Question about the floor <laughs> plan. Okay. Uh, is, is that a DVG file? Overall, what it is is work. it's an image that's over that's an underlay of uh, I guess how it's set up is it's a virtual grid uh, over over an image so you pick uh, location on the grid but the image in the background is is changeable. Yes. Yes. Uh, what are your plans for the future of the product? were prepared for that question. Uh, so moving forward, one of our things we have to work on is location tracking. Uh, that's one of the things that it's not exactly as accurate as we need it to be for this uh, application. Some of the limitations are the technology that's available. Um, getting your precise location inside the building is a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that could have been a project for the semester in a whole. Um, login and password security, so you, each company can uh, 
log in as as a user and get all the settings that they have set up for them so it's not uh, generic for everybody that gets the tablet. Uh, image markup, image gallery, so once you take the, the picture, you do it, mark it up, so this is exactly where it's at, going on it. Uh, weather automation and repurpose for other industries. Uh, we feel like uh, it's just as a form, uh, some middle thing, it, it's an application that can be used for a lot of different other uh, Some of the categories just off of the top of our heads that when, when we were brainstorming was logistics, safety, quality progress, maintenance, construction, manufacturing. I mean, anything that 3D data or 2D location tracking would benefit a form, we think this would apply to. I guess I don't know exactly how far at all. Or what what more additional information do you need to make that happen, I guess. It'd be interesting to do. Uh, could you use your uh, application to do a building model already in place? Absolutely. I mean you wouldn't have the three D model integration, but these forms are created, it doesn't the location information is then not relevant, but all the other information is is there is pretty good. Uh, assuming you have uh, a gun that's with appropriate phasing and so on and so forth, would you use your software to go in and identify preemptively uh, leading edges, stuff like that? That's kind of a goal of that's kind of an ultimate goal of the project is to be at a point that we've collected enough data that we can then create a software that you can apply into the Revit model and say this kind of structure is going to create a safety hazard um, just to prevent it and sort of give a heads up sort of like Celebre I don't know if you're acquainted with that it's a OSHA standard checking software so you run it and it tells you if your ramps are at the right angle if your doors are the right openings um, it'd be similar to that I'm going to push you a little bit more on the, on the what happens after the fact. Okay, okay so collected my data at the end of the day, mm -hmm. uh, used, the, used the tablet base, um, and uh, one of your screens had uh, some red blocks on the right hand side that said corrected, which would infer that there are some things that were not corrected. <laughs> Very good. Can we get to that? Yeah. Oh. We have to create one. Minute. <laughs> okay, while you're, while you're getting to that. So, my, my question is, uh, what, what are the implications of uh, recording this data, um, observing that uh, there are items, and at the end of the day, going back to the uh, job credit and uploading a file that says that there are safety issues that are not correct? Well, um, <laughs> We would hope that if it was a severe enough uh, safety hazard that you would fix it before you had left the scene or had set a plan into action to fix it in as soon as you could. But as far as leaving it open, that's, I guess, that's not a factor of this. I mean, even if you're already walking the site, so it's not any different than recording with the paper, I guess. Um, it's all the same. It's same in, in situation. So if you're recording on paper, it's still open. You just have a little bit more information about it. Um, so maybe you can go back and fix it. Easier. And, and we had discussed uh, uh, some sort of notification when you submit it to the server, say, hey, this hasn't been dealt with kind of thing. Um, we At this point, we don't have it. Um, but it, it's something that we've looked into and we uh, discussed for the future. Yeah. It would be nice if from your report, if there were issues that were open, then the user could go in and say, close this out, yeah. and you'd be able to track, right. you know, on a timely basis, if there are any open issues left. And, and somebody in management would be able to 
before if you have hey, our issues are either closed out or not. Right. And then you can follow up. Why not? Right. That's kind of our um, thoughts on after it's submitted, there's going to be a web based um, <coughs> software, web based um, location you can edit, edit, view everything, and that would kind of be integrated with that. Um, kind of like what you guys use now with uh, SageNet, I think, would be similar to. The other thing you can do with that is you can tie in, once you did that, you had all the users in there for the project. So if you had the contractors and all the subcontractors, if you did a report the other day or something, or if you pushed a dummy notice for everything that's left open, then it could automatically send whoever the contact is for that open yeah. issue. So you could, you could tie it to that as well. And you could make it automatically you know, at the end of the day or you know, a certain period of midnight. You could Right. I think we've kind of. Yeah, I think um, kind of what we've done is we've collected the data, got into the model, but there's still a lot more you can do with this information as far as um, searching it and submitting it to other people, creating the forms. Um, one of the things we looked at, didn't quite get enough time to, is uh, emailing these forms to who needs them uh, as soon as they're submitted. Um, that's not, I guess, that far off of where we are, but, um, so it, as far as after this information is collected, it, there's a lot of purposes that you use for it. And, and I'll be honest with you, the reason we haven't gone with a software program like that is because of the tracking and responses. Um, we, we were one of the original folks at DBO2 on the larger job site, and uh, the problem was there was all kinds of stuff left open it's not a turning point privilege, you're creating a plaintiff's attorney, you know, safety law. I guess what you're doing is that they can go through and regardless of whether or not they were corrected, regardless of how severe they were, you know, that carpenter might have put up that guardrail while you were standing there, but if the subcontractor didn't go back in and respond finally, it's still an outstanding issue. Um, and, and I guess to tie down to what was said uh, um, from Pepper, not to give too much credit from Pepper, but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, we're using Bella and CMIC. If there was an integration into that um, somehow with the notification, since we already have, you know, people up and familiar with those systems, would be great because me not being a computer guy, just a dumb safety guy, um, not know what's compatible, what isn't, and I tell my IT folks, hey, I've got another system for you to do it. Um, and it's not plug and play, if you will. Um, I can tell you where it's going to end up. So, you know, I've, I've got the liability standpoint that's my big concern, uh, you know, appropriate notification, time of response, et cetera, which is a human factor, quite frankly, um, not a, a, a factor here for the program, but, uh, but definitely being able to be compatible with programs we've already spent a lot of money on and a lot of effort into you know, work for you the day or whatever that is something that we had discussed, and ideally in the future we would like to be compatible with any other software that's out there. That was one of our goals is uh, we didn't want to create a file that you had to do special things with to get it to work in the Navis Works. Uh, this file will not even just throw it in there, so it's not like you need to go out and get something special to get this format to open. But as far as, um, I guess, the other systems, uh, all that data is there, I guess it just has to be converted into a format that it could be used. And one thing I do want to say is with the location tracking and elevation, the most safety is really, I think, our folks is valuable knowledge to know, um, you know, the safety, if you have fall distances, things like that. For quality, if I'm looking for specific issues, I need to know where it is. I don't want to know that it's on the north wall. I want to know where I'm on the north wall. So, you guys, you know, good job with that. Keep working on it. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. So, you, you did a lot of work that you guys put into that's kind of an ongoing process at this point. Um, we've talked to several people, and I think it's kind of clear about where we need to go in this process. We're still in meetings and yeah, trying to figure that out right now. That process started about a week ago. Licensing? Yeah. We're not at the point even meeting or what? So, the, the nodes that are being modeled there, you can 
color code those by oh, yeah, customization or by contract. Right. And you can run it through the, the, the schedule mm -hmm. and watch the observation pop up right, as the schedule evolves. Right. At this point in time, it's not integrated with scheduling just because, I guess, uh, time restriction of what we had time to do. But the information's there. We know how to do it. It just hasn't been that link hasn't been made. But as far as it being associated with timeline, yeah, it can, it's very, very, very easy. I think from the from the solving problems for future jobs, that predictability that time the observation to a point of schedule gives you a tremendous Any other questions? Um, it actually uses the last note, the last recorded uh, location information because um, if you either pick it or pick your location or uh, automatically scan it, update it, you, it saves that location, it stores it, and so when the observation is submitted, that's the information that's tagged to that observation. Uh, the last minute location. Okay, so how does it know if you take a picture of something that's really That is through the manual uh, Z coordinate slider. So this is our manual slider here to get the Z direction um, from from the level specified. Uh, it, it's associated with the level of the, of the uh, model. If anyone wants to, after our designated time, you can come up and play with the app as well. We have four tablets. Any other questions? I'm just going to comment on the uh, gentleman's observation about the plaintiff's attorney's list. I, I, I agree. It, 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 it creates that, that exposure. Um, the flip side to that is the ability to learn from patterns that could be discerned from your data. Uh, with regard to time, with regard to location, perhaps even with regard to distance from the superintendent's trailer. Um, the uh, ability to uh, to bring that data back and make it a learning tool, you really do have the ability then to come back and, and whether it's in schedule, location, subcontractor, uh, from multiple jobs, uh, to be able to aggregate that data and, and come back and say, here's an area that we can help keep people safer. Um, and uh, we'll have to work at this point to figure out how to plan to out of our Well, that's evidence of due diligence. But yeah, it, it really is. That, and, that, and we, that, it's a no brainer. Right. We, we, yeah. get, uh, we, we do get, I won't call it a hall pass, but uh, recognition in the industry that when you're, when you're making the right efforts to do things right, the uh, regulatory agency observes that. The challenge is that if you get into a, into a lawsuit, then all that's wrong, but I, I applaud your, uh, the tool you created here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.